tonight to feel sorry for Drew. <laughs> well, not because I bumped him out, because we're planning on rooming together in college. <laughs> and now to the fun part. Our honored speaker tonight has lived a colorful life. She was born in Donaldson, Arkansas, but according to Miss Bonds, she packed her diaper her bag and moved to California when she was all of three months old. This set the tone for the rest of her life. She graduated from Thomas Downing High School in Modesto, California in 1959. She lived in various exciting California locales until 1974, at which time she moved back to Arkansas. Ms. Bonds graduated from Henderson State Univers University with a BSc in English in 1980. Six years later, she earned her master's degree in speech and drama. She accomplished this while teaching and performing in various productions around the Central Arkansas area. Ms. Bonds taught at Malvern High School from 1980 to the spring of 1998. During this time, she performed many magic tricks, taught English with style, and left a lasting impression on the class of 2000, even though she was only with us for one semester. <coughs> she had to go on disability retirement due to a heart condition after the first semester of our sophomore year. Being retired has given her time to pick up some old interests in life long ago. She is currently working on a screenplay, painting with Gusto, and most recently she finished her speech for tonight. She writes, she paints, she takes in stray dogs, and she still makes time for former students. Everything she does, she does with humor, grace, and dignity. We are all better for her her being in our lives, and we are extremely pleased that she is with us tonight. Please help Drew and me welcome Miss Judy Bond. to be or not to be. 
I promise you folks, Shakespeare was right. That really is the question. Every day of your life, that's the question. You know, a few years back, you made a decision to be a graduate or not to be a graduate. Some of you even made the further decision to be an honor graduate or not to be an honor graduate. And once you made that decision, you started making thousands of other to be or not to be decisions. To be on time with this assignment or not to be on time with this assignment. To be in class or not to be in class. To be awake in class or not to be awake in class. And based on the choices you made, you're here tonight. You're graduating. The point is this. Your whole life is going to be just like that. Your life is your choice. What you choose to do is exactly what you do. Yes, you will be influenced by others. You will be pressured by others. But I promise you that the final decision is yours to be or not to be. Where you are 10 years from tonight is pretty much where you'll choose to be 10 years from tonight. Don't misunderstand me. I, I know that life doesn't always work out. Circumstances happen that ruin the best laid plans. Health problems, even if you don't engage in risky behavior, accidents, disappointments, those things will happen. But when those things happen, you still have to make a to be or not to be decision to be defeated by this circumstance or not to be defeated by this circumstance. And by the way, that's a good example of when not to be is a better choice. And the thing about it is, you can't not choose, said the English teacher with a perfectly straight face. If, I, if you don't choose to be, then either actively or passively, you have chosen not to be. And if you make passive choices in your life, I guarantee you that your life will simply happen to you. But if you make active choices, you're going to make your life happen. One vital to be decision that you need to make is to be to one own self true. Shakespeare again. What does that mean to be true to yourself? It does not mean being self-obsessed or self-absorbed. It simply means finding out who you are and being who you are. I know that sounds easy, but it's not. It's every bit that simple. It's every bit that complicated. You're at that wonderful, exciting, painful, terrifying time of becoming yourself. Do you realize that? I mean, pretty soon, you will be the 500-pound gorilla. You'll be the one to make the decisions in your life. And the flip side of that glorious freedom coin is that you will also be the one responsible for your decisions. You're going to make mistakes. Just give yourself that right now. Don't worry about it. It's just part of living. But the only real mistake you'll ever make is the one from which you learn nothing. And when you think about it, if you learn from your mistake, it's no longer a mistake. It's a lesson. Another vital to be question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? Let's say life is on a mountain, and your innermost dream, the thing you want most in the world, is at the top of that mountain. I don't have a doubt in my mind that each and every one of you could bound up that mountain with joy and energy and passion if it weren't for the little grains of sand in your shoes. <laughs> And I promise you, those little grains of sand will be in your shoes whether you're headed for your dream or not. Why not be what you want to be? Go for the dream. The only thing you need to understand about dreams is that every dream has a price tag. Some kind of sacrifice has to be made to achieve any dream. Look at the price tag. See if you're willing to pay it. But I encourage you more to consider the price you'll eventually have to pay for letting your dreams die without ever trying to realize them. 
If you head towards your dream, you may end up in the neighborhood. I mean, maybe you won't be the star linebacker on a professional football team. Maybe you'll be the cameraman who films the linebacker on a professional football team. You'll be around something you love, and you won't have his arthritis problems when you're 50 years old. <laughs> At least go to your dream. Get as close as you can get, and realize that your dreams may change as you get older. I mean, that's right, no problem. But folks, I mean this. Always have a dream. <laughs> Always have a dream. George Bernard Shaw said one time that he thought an appropriate epitaph for the tune some of the lost people would be died at 30, buried at 60. <laughs> Don't let that be your life. Stay open, stay interested, stay alive all your life. So there's my best in less than 10 minutes. Realize that your life is your choice. I want to say that one more time. I'm telling you, if I had known that, well, I know. <laughs> but I really want you to hear that. That's, that's, your life really is your choice. It's up to you. And I want you to make that choice to be exactly who you are, to be exactly what you want to be. You know, this is... <sighs> This is the last class, I'm sorry, <laughs> that I've ever taught or probably ever will teach. And I want you to know that I feel like I found out a winner. Because you made me a winner. You will forever be in my heart and in my mind. Thank you.